lot along the way. So I've made a list of all the different things to discuss. Remember, most importantly, I am taking Q&A. So load up the Q&A there with the questions that you have online, IG, uh, or Clubhouse. We're going to have all Q&A answered for everybody here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, here we go. Travel tips, starting with know your trip. You know, we talk about an investment, knowing your timing and your risk tolerance. You need to know the same thing. What type of trip are you taking? Where are you staying? What are you doing? These are important questions. So your first checklist for a tri trip is being a student of your calendar for your trip. Understanding all the travel that's necessary all the things, requirements that you have in order to determine what the best way to take the trip is, meaning direct flights, not direct flights, the airlines, first class, coach class, determinative upon what the timing of the trip is and what the requirements of the trip is. You're gonna to wanna to invest your money on your trip in the most important things, knowing the what of your trip, personally, experientially, production-wise and receiving-wise, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have the necessary alignment with your trip, the same as an investment. Timing and risk tolerance, looking to see, you know, if I'm only gonna spend, for example, a couple hours in my room, or if I'm taking an overnight flight, I may want to get a room from the night before because I have a few hours to shower, take a few hours of nap, get ready, do business, et cetera, and it's well worth the extra day uh, of, getting a hotel room, and I do that all the time, to be able to save the time on the front end and take a red eye, and then get into a hotel room five in the morning when you land. Uh, all types of things that happen. Uh, so first tip is to make a checklist about requirements for your trip, timing, you know, all the different personal, experiential, whatever it is. Make a list, look at it so you know where and what to do. Uh, so the first thing is, you know, getting to the airport, we want to determine, determine how long it's going to be if you want to park a car. And if you do park your car, one of the tricks that I've learned or tips that I've learned is always park your car with your nose out. Uh, much easier to find. If anyone has taken longer trips, especially, and parked their car, it can't remember. Take a picture of everything, uh, by the way, on your trip. Uh, another essential, I take a picture of what I packed, I take a picture of my passport, my driver's license, a credit card, I take pictures of everything or anything that I may forget uh, or lose or get stolen. I take a picture of it, uh, cannot be more valuable than to take the time to snap photos of you know your car with the nose out so that you can find that car easier and uh, save yourself a ton of time if you do park your car. If you don't park your car and you get a ride, make sure that once again, that if that ride is from family, friends, or associates, that your arrangements are there to be most efficient with your time, to drop you off, know the terminal, uh, at whatever amount of time that you need, whether you have Claire or TSA, or if you're checking bags or not. Um, I'm a big fan of doing everything I can not to check bags. Uh, I would rather purchase clothes, FedEx clothes, than actually have to check a bag. Too many things happen uh, that are inefficient when you uh, have to check your bag. If you do, uh, make sure that you take pictures of the bag itself and what's the contents of the bag. Make sure that you have a backup uh, plan with your carry-on in case there is some sort of problem with your bag that you have at least one day. You know, I carry my toiletries and my, my own carry-on uh, if I have to pack a bag, which is very, very rare. Like I said, I'd rather FedEx clothes to myself uh, or UPS clothes or uh, like I buy clothes, uh, you know, throwaway clothes that I can give away uh, to someone in more need than me, uh, especially with expense of, of bags, if you have to pay for those as well. Um, always pack your essentials in your carry-on or buy or ship them. Uh, know all of your hotel information. It might sound simple, but so many people uh, end up at the wrong hotel. You know, for example, in Indianapolis, there's two Marriott's. One is a JW Marriott, the other is a Marriott, and they're right by each other. And so many people end up at the wrong Marriott. Or make sure that you know your hotel information. Um, always save your boarding passes as well. 
Uh, you never know where that information, or at least take a picture of your boarding pass or have a digital one. Make sure that you save all the flight information, the gate information. These are all the things. Uh, also know when to use uh, a sky cap, right? The sky cap can be used to skip lines. It's amazing how far a tip will take you. So if you run into time schedules, uh, utilizing a sky cap to skip the lines by uh, paying him a tip uh, in order to get to your flight on time or to check your bags or to get your boarding passes. Sky caps work very readily with the employees. Uh, they have a great relationship and to be able to uh, give them a little bit something else, extra, a little lanyap, it'll go a long way with the sky cap. Um, if you're a new traveler, if you're taking new travelers, start with something easy, right? My kids have been traveling for years, but I, you know, didn't just throw them to the wolves on their first trip and send them off to Kenya, uh, right? Give them an easy one hour trip with you and explain and teach them all the nuances of traveling uh, and or yourself uh, if it's your first time traveling. Uh, make sure your phones are all sorted out. There's a whole system for phones to make sure they're charged, to make sure you have additional chargers. Prepare for the chargers not to work at the airport. Prepare for the chargers not to work on the airplane. Prepare for the internet not to work in the airport and the airplane. Make sure, uh, as I am in the hotel room uh, today, I have a backup system because the hotel internet is down. And so the training here would not be going on right now, but for a hotspot that I have and was prepared with two and three backup plans in case power or internet doesn't work. Make sure you think through these things. It can change your entire trip in productivity, especially if you're not prepared with stuff to do with no internet or you're not prepared to do uh, with stuff with no power. Uh, make sure that you have prepared yourself to use that time, whether it's for rest or meditation. You know, sometimes I will take flights purposely at a time so that I can just rest. I can sleep and I can overlap my sleep with getting or teletransporting myself from one location to the next. Um, you know, there are all types of productivity. Remember, when you travel, on average, it could take six to eight hours to get to even the most uh, simple destinations. And if you could save two hours or create two hours of productivity, and you know, if you travel 10 times a year, that's 20 hours, that's almost three days of productivity. 100 times a year, that's 200 days, 200 hours, right? And if you're like me, 200 days a year, each time I'm two hours more productive by creating these systems, right? It's 400 hours of productivity. That's 10 weeks of productivity. And if you do that over 20, 30 years, it's amazing how much farther you get compared to other people just from understanding productivity. Remember, you get improvement by utilizing measurables and these measurables are important. Luggage, right? Not only do we need to understand internet and power, but luggage. Use the right luggage. Think about what you're doing as you create the criteria or the resource list for every single trip. That's the majority of what we do and we align it as a student in your calendar. Make sure you pack the right luggage, right? The luggage that you know will fit on the overhead. You know, I purchased a perfect bag that is the maximizing space for the overhead. It's long and flat and it allows me to have not only packables, but it also allows me to have hangables. Um, and including the right gear beyond luggage. So uh, the right gear, flashlight. Um, I actually create uh, what's called a go bag. And the go bag is an accumulation of all the lessons learned. Uh, and all of these tips, like I said, these all these tips are in uh, the exercise I created. If you want them, just email me, david at dmelter.com. But the go bag is a golden uh, secret that I've learned. So throughout a trip, you will think about, gosh, I wish I had Q-tips. Oh my gosh, I wish I had a brush. I wish I had an extra charger. I wish I had a Tide stick. I wish I had, uh, you know, tape. I wish I had clothing tape. I wish I had uh, collar stays. I wish I had a pair of socks. Whatever it may be, every time I said I wish I had on a trip, I went home or during the trip bought it for my go bag. And therefore, my go bag is either put into a carry-on or a separate carry-on by itself, determined upon where I'm going and what I'm doing, that has every single item that I wish I would have had 
uh, in, you know, whether it be a flashlight or Q-tips uh, or suntan lotion, uh, and it's amazing, Band-Aids, uh, creams, whatever it is, uh, all travel size. Uh, so I always have a little toothpaste, a little shampoo, a little soap, a little ear, ear things, whatever it may be, all are there. Um, another thing is backup data. Make sure you have one, two, or three sources to get the content that you need. Backup data on sticks or memory, uh, external memory drives, laptops, phone, etc. Cloud data backup. Make sure that everything's backed up accordingly so that it will save you and make you more productive, etc. Uh, another one that's new uh, over the last few years is apps, right? Do a resource check on the applications that you're going to use to use. For example, Flight View is one that is uh, very critical for me where I put all the flights in in a trip that I'm going to take and it keeps me up to date right from the source. What gate, what terminal, what times the actual plane is going to land and uh, in what gate you land at if you're connecting flights it's especially valuable to have apps like that but I would make sure that you do an app check of what apps you're going to use and need to use and make sure they're up to date make sure they're working and you can also work from there so uh, that's a new one on there uh, towel you know it, it's nice to pack a towel uh, for a variety of reasons if you have room I always try to pack a towel um, and, uh, you know, utilize that rolling it up. Now packing itself, the best tip I have for packing is determinative upon what your trip is like. Use YouTube. Um, YouTube has so many great packing tips from using the, uh, the plastic from your dry cleaning and rolling clothes up in there so they don't get wrinkled and rolling clothes in general to how to pack jeans, dresses, hangers, whatever it is, uh, go ahead, use YouTube for the best techniques on packing what you're going to pack. Uh, you know, if you have dress shirts, put in dress shirt packing. If you have jeans, put in jean packing, shoes packing, accoutrement packing, whatever it is, you will find unbelievable tips on YouTube uh, of how to uh, pack. I already talked about extra socks. Um, make sure that you have all the necessary cards that you need and you've taken pictures of those bank cards, credit cards, passport, uh, insurance cards, whatever they may be. Uh, you know, make sure you have a digital wallet uh, that has pictures of all of these different things um, there. Uh, make sure that you are not afraid of using old school maps. Uh, you know, we trust drives me nuts, but we trust uh, our GPS's on the phone uh, way too much. You know, I think uh, if you have time on a plane to have printed out maps or looked at maps uh, to get a feel for what you're looking at in your application that utilizes GPS, you will save yourself a ton of problems and times by using old school maps uh, in some direction, either online or, or printed out that actually allow you to get a reference points uh, in mind to know when you know GPS has miscalculated for you. Uh, and the more time crunched you are or efficient you are, in my opinion, the more crucial it is to use uh, old school maps and don't be afraid to use them. Um, you know, I tell my driver all the time uh, as they're leaving airports and looking down at their phone, I said, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, for almost a hundred years now, people have been driving out of this airport look up at the signs it'll tell you where the freeways are once you get onto the freeway go ahead and use your app in order to effectuate where you're going but in those very tight uh, decision making constructs the gps is not 100 percent accurate um, and so use and don't be afraid to use um, those map also you know determinative upon the type of trip that you're taking uh, don't be afraid to go to the tourism office there's so many uh, great resources of knowing where things are, what's close to here. If you have business meetings or personal issues that you want to deal with, what, the shopping, the food, all of these things, your tax dollars have paid for tourism offices that literally know almost everything uh, around you to ask questions and to be prepared. Um, I also am not a big fan of money belts. Uh, I think money belts are a target. Um, 
you know, people see you using a money belt, uh, you become a target. Uh, and so when it comes to uh, keeping my things safe, I have hidden spots uh, that I use and they, I vary them, determined upon the bag I have, the clothes I have, where it is to hide my valuables. And I only take with me what I'm going to need, uh, especially uh, on the financial side, trying to use Venmo and credit cards and only bring as much cash as I need uh, or think I would need. Uh, in any circumstance or any cash, I'd be, you know, not afraid to lose. Let's just put it that way. Um, uh, always uh, carry some sort of lock with you. Um, if you have longer trips, uh, it does not hurt. Uh, I also believe, uh, you know, reading about an area, if it's a personal trip, will enhance the trip as well. Um, one of the other tricks that I use uh, is I scout out... Uh, you know, I believe in having a very inexpensive gym that's nationwide, uh, and you all know the names of these gyms. You can save a ton of money, time, and resources. I used to fly into Manhattan, uh, and I'd go to a 24-hour fitness, and I'd work out right off the plane. I'd shower, shave, have everything there, do a whole day of work, and that enabled me to fly back home that night, take a nap on the plane, uh, but do, you know, what other people might spend a week and literally tens of thousands of dollars I could do and be productive in one day in New York because I had a gym uh, membership. McDonald's, Starbucks, uh, find those locations when you come into a city, make sure you've done your research because you never know when you need a clean bathroom or internet. Uh, and these are pretty stable places that are almost on every corner <laughs> that make your flights, uh, your, your trips much easier. Uh, no one to fly direct, uh, no one to fly first class, middle class, low class, uh, determine I'm not going to use airlines names, uh, but make sure that you're efficient, number one, with your time, and two, with your rest and efficiency. So, you know, it's a major decision where to and when to fly. I purposely will fly through certain cities, take a meeting, I'll fly through certain cities because I would have to get something to eat and take some coaching calls. I will take a direct flight or fly overnight when it's most productive, efficient, effective, and statistically successful. Um, watch your lines, right? Look for, if you have places you need to go that have lines, look for the lines with experienced travels in, travelers in there. Look for lines uh, that seem to be moving uh, more efficiently than others. You can save hours of time uh, in your trips by either finding it out if there's a way to get around the line, fast passes, speed passes, tips, uh, things like that. You do not want to spend your business or personal trips in line. So figure out the best ways to manage the lines as well. Um, always ask names of people and ask for upgrades. Remember a Dave Meltzer specialty in everything is don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, I have gotten more things by being kind. Uh, I bring gifts and tips for everyone that I can, uh, especially the manager of the hotel, uh, making sure that I ask their name and ask them, hey, do you know anyone can help me? I really need a room with this or that or a bigger room if there's one available. Uh, even if I don't have the you know travel criteria to do so, 80% of the time or so, People are so gracious if you're nice and they're the power that the, the people have uh, that most people abuse all day long. If you treat kindly, it's the power they have to upgrade you to the presidential suite or to get you a reservation at a restaurant or just these critical things that can happen as we travel. Kindness is a superpower to people. Tipping is a superpower to people. It's amazing, you know, if you treat people nicely, kindly, and what they will do for you, and don't forget to ask, uh, very, very important. Uh, know where libraries are uh, as well. Uh, these libraries are empty, quiet places. Uh, once again, you never know what you're gonna need for or do, but a library is a safe place that has internet connectivity, bathrooms, uh, quiet places. They actually have phone rooms as well. Uh, you know, and they are not used very often, but they are in almost every city. Um, uh, eating, 
you know, make sure that you scout out your eating, uh, your hospitality, your um, timing, not only eating, uh, I'm losing track here, sorry, but for it's uh, your sleep, sorry. Woo. You know, I have a sleep strategy for every trip. I make sure, like I said, this checklist of resources to see where I can pick up uh, the best sleep. And it is also, you know, the criteria of a room. You know, if I'm only gonna be in a room to sleep, I wanna make sure they have a nice bed. Or if I need a shower, a nice shower. Or if I'm doing meetings, I'm gonna try to get upgraded into a room that has a meeting room or a living room where the hotel will give me a meeting room, a quiet place. Uh, you can save so much time by being the center point and having what I call holding court. Uh, even in your city, if it's not your city, to have every one of your meetings come to you is the most efficient way, especially if you have a one or two day trip that you could take 20, 30, or even 40 meetings in two days. Uh, imagine how many trips from California to New York you're saving when you use that efficiency by um, holding court in that direction. You also can have food served to you, to others. It's ama amazing what you can do. One of the other things I have in my go bag is a first aid kit. Um, what I've learned is that first aid kit carries all the little things, you know, fingernail clippers. There's just a variety of things um, that you have in this go bag that's good. Uh, if you have and can book flights, you know, two, three months out, you'll save so much money. Just another quick tip uh, that I have. Um, be open-minded, open-hearted, and open-handed on a trip. Double check everything. Uh, I'm on a trip right now, as I mentioned, for my daughter's graduation. And last week, as we got a week out, we double-checked everything. The flight dates, the confirmation numbers, the airports, the driving times, the hotel reservation. And believe it or not, most of those things that I listed out were wrong or weren't in existence uh, because I had planned those out. And because it was a week earlier, it wasn't a problem. If as this graduation is one of the biggest days of my life or trips of my life, something would have been screwed up at the time. Who knows emotionally what the expense was, let alone economically. Um, I carry the trust and vet approach on a trip, business or pleasure. You know, I trust everyone for advice, but I vet it. I'll go and, you know, whether the advice is on TripAdvisor or online or in person, I try to find as many opinions as I can and vet those um, because I will try new things. I will try to, to you know, ask and have open mind, heart, and of course, hands, but I'm going to vet uh, very, as much as I can, uh, the information to keep on trying to figure out what I do. Uh, one of the newer trends is have an empty metal water bottle. Uh, if you can attach that on the outside of your bag, obviously it doesn't count as a carry-on, uh, another trick, layers. So if you are trying, you're on a little longer trip and trying to, to save space, uh, wear layers and take them off when you get on the plane. Uh, you know, so I always, I have uh, jackets that have huge pockets. I fill them with socks and underwear and sometimes my toiletries inside and out pockets. So I'll have that jacket. I'll have a smaller jacket under there filled with the pockets. I'll have my sport coat. I have even a shirt with a t-shirt underneath it that I may actually, you know, want to use again. Um, and I could literally have two or three extra days of clothes on my being by overlapping that, uh, which is one of the fun things uh, that we do. Um, I always say, know your sh shoes, uh, know your shoes, workout shoes, walking shoes, uh, especially women, make sure that you have the right shoes. Know your shoes, there has to be a shoe strategy, not just for looks, but for functionality uh, as well. Walking tours are great to take on personal trips. Attraction cards are great to use. Uh, you know, determined upon, you know, I always hide emergency cash uh, and, you know, that's hidden. I, I will sometimes determine upon the hotel, use their safe. Uh, but make sure that you take a picture of the safe, put it into your phone as well, uh, so you remind yourself in some respect to make sure you get your stuff out of the safe. Um, ask, ask. Uh, travel insurance. 
uh, is another big question on tips. You know, if there is the likelihood that you may change or cancel a trip or, you know, uh, something could happen, go ahead and pay for the insurance. If you are more than 99% sure, uh, which is a majority of your travel, that you're going to the graduation, you're not gonna change the time, right? Then go ahead and, and don't pay for the insurance. But if you have doubts, uh, it's well worth it to have the insurance on a trip and get travel insurance, it's very inexpensive. Uh, you wanna be frugal when you travel, but not cheap. You know, where, know where to spend your money. You know, if you have a favorite restaurant and you know, you want to, you know, use that and go to lunch there instead of dinner, you can save money. A couple just generalities before we go to the Q&A part of uh, our famous Friday trainings. Here's a couple simple ones. Be patient, right? Be patient, no matter what it is. Have patient, be respectful. Remember, most of the people that you deal with are not being treated with respect all day long. Respect is the best tip you can give. When you show someone and treat them like your boss uh, that may not sit in that position, you are gonna win every time. Be kind to your future self and be patient and respectful. Uh, relax, right? If you feel you know that there's triggers going on and need to be offended and need to be anxious, frustrated, worried, angry, guilty, offended, all these things happen when we travel, just stop, drop, and roll, breathe. Don't try to resist it. Take a moment. I had a, a horrible experience when I was at the NFL draft a couple weeks ago. Everything was circling around me. I had my friend who had surgery that I was meeting. I was meeting my aunt. My uncle had passed away and my cousin and she had to go to work and my car went in the wrong direction and I was doing a thing with Mar all this stuff and all of a sudden I just decided to give up on it. I just decided to stop, breathe, and start over. Uh, and that's what we want to do. Try to also, you know, take pictures on your trip so that you have, you know, things that will remind you who you met so you can follow up appropriately. You know, I codify what went on in the morning and night with gratitude as well as with pictures as well as with lists to make sure that, you know, I'm texting, you know, when I meet someone, I'm texting it either to myself or to others to make sure that I'm repositing all of that different stuff uh, that we are. I try to sit at the front of the plane. Why would you want to waste time by sitting in the back of the plane? It doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, and, uh, you know, it can, think about it, each flight, it could take 30 minutes extra if you're at the back of the plane on average. So on there and back, it's an hour of your life of productivity uh, to sit there. Um, so these are just a few of the trips. I have many more. Uh, if you want the exercises, like I said, just email me, david at dmelzer.com. Get the travel tips. This is our first time ever doing this training. I went down as many as I could in a half an hour, but we want to get to Q&A about everything. That's my favorite part. Remember, next week is bring your own questions. I'll bring the answer. It's an Ask Me Anything Friday. We're going to love it. I will be uh, traveling once again, so hopefully connectivity will be great. All right, it's time to get these questions rocking and rolling. I'm going to take one from online as I bring up one of our faves, Christina Madrigal, you are on deck. Let me take this quest first question right here. <clears throat> How do you clear your mind during meditation so you can receive a download? Uh, first of all, meditation is the practice of being quiet. So meditation is the practice of being quiet. Uh, and the way that we practice being quiet is start small, lower the bar, breathe, and think to yourself if there's not quiet, that you need to be quiet. And so if a thing comes to mind, you could say cancel in your mind. If it keeps coming back, you could say clear. You could breathe through your nose, out through your mouth. Remind yourself, this is the practice of being quiet. And soon this muscle starts taking over and allowing you to get clarity, balance, and focus on what you want. And when you clear the interference between what you and R and you are connected to, it's extraordinary the downloads that you receive, the information that you receive, and then you learn through that meditation to transcode that and transform it and transition it into a material way. And so uh, you clear that mind by understanding it's a practice of being quiet and clearing the interference between you and the ultimate truth, the source, the light, the love, and the lessons will come through that download to transition and transform and transcode into your material life. There's a balance uh, that is created between the truth and humankind, which we can get into later. Christina, welcome. How are you? Hello, happy 
Hey, happy Friday. Thank you so much. What's going on? Um, well, congratulations again on your daughter and, and the travel and this today, the training has been so pragmatic and it's one of the many reasons why I adore you because you just take things in the real world and step-by-step -step guide. So thank you. Uh, so um, today my question is the difference or helping, I guess, know uh, the difference between seeking approval from others or seeking approval versus seeking appreciation. So oh. I am, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm understanding not necessarily going for approval, but it's kind of sort of nice to be like, hey, thanks, Christina, great job. Let's <laughs> appreciate that. So what, oh, what's so, the difference? <laughs> yeah, well, let me help with the difference and also uh, with the act. So right, no, nobody gives approval, especially when we seek it. Um, so approval comes from inside of ourselves, and so we can't find outside of ourselves what we can't find inside of ourselves. So the similarity between seeking approval and appreciation is we have to appreciate ourselves. In other words, when we do things unconditionally, when we know that this is something that makes us feel good by allowing things to come through us with appreciation, people will appreciate it. Will they always articulate their appreciation? No. How many times do we tell someone, hey, you know, you didn't appreciate this. Oh, yes, I did. Well, you didn't say, even say thank you. Oh, I'm so sorry. Right? We're human. There's once again this reconciliation of the truth and humankind. And it's so difficult because we project this expectation that people are better than we are. How many times have we forgot to say thank you? How many times have we maybe appeared not to be grateful or even appear to approve others? You know, as a parent, as an aunt or an uncle, or as a, a sibling, or as a, 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 a spouse, or even as a child. How many times do you think that our alternate relative doesn't feel appreciated or doesn't feel approved when that's not our intention at all? I mean, I will tell you having three daughters and especially teenage daughters that they could not even imagine how much I appreciate them or imagine how much I approve of them, how proud I am of them. But do I articulate it effectively all the time? Not a chance. There's this reconciliation between the truth of how I feel, knowing how I feel, and humankind. And I am part of humankind, and so are you. Meaning that we are not perfect beings who can articulate what we feel correctly, or articulate what we feel all the time, or articulate uh, what we feel of what someone else would interpret, meaning it's not what we say, it's what they hear. I've complimented people and I've offended them. And I had no meaning that they thought I had. And so I think the best thing to do, uh, Christina, is utilize forgiveness to find the appreciation and approval within yourself. And you'll find that more and more people not only appreciate and approve you, but they start articulating it in a better way. You know why? Because when you see it inside of you, you will give that meaning to what other people do and say and act upon outside of you. And the same acts that used to seem to you or perceive to you to be non-appreciative or non-approval will absolutely feel emotionally that you're being approved and appreciated. Does that sound fair? Oh my gosh, yes, so much. Thank you. You just... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And I appreciate you always asking questions. Again, you know, it always, for anybody that does these things, fireside chats or, you know, clubhouses or whatever, we all know the first question, you know, is the most important. So I just want to articulate to you, Christina, that I appreciate you always having that first question ready for me because they start lining up behind you every time. Uh, and thank you for breaking the ice. All right, I'm gonna take a quick question online and then Kelly Kay, you're gonna be up next. Um, the question is, is forgiveness the key to happiness? So the key to happiness is that you already are happy, just like you already are healthy, just like you already are wealthy, and forgiveness is the key to clearing the interference between you and what you already are. And so forgiveness is a key to clearing the interference. Forgiveness is the key to radical humility. 
to allowing you to identify the triggers of the ego and also to resolve the triggers of the ego. Forgiveness is one of the tools to reconcile this great truth of happiness with humankind, with what we are, an amalgamation of feelings and embodiment that is confused and creates interference between what we are and what goes through us with gratitude, forgiveness, and accountability. So look at forgiveness as a tool to clear the interference between you and what you already are, and you already are healthy, wealthy, happy, worthy, or anything else you want to be. You already are those things. Let's use gratitude, forgiveness, and accountability to clear the interference. Let's use stop, drop, and roll when we identify the triggers that are interfering with that uh, happiness or other things that you already are. Thank you for that question. And now, Kelly Kay, what's going on? Hey, how are you? And this is my first time in here. Thank you so much um, for hosting. Thank you. Um, my question, thank you. Um, my question is, I have a partner, so I have a co-founder and a couple of other people that are interested in, in working with me and what I'm building. And one partner, um, it's such a strange problem to have, um, but he, oh, um, but he, he will often do things um, without asking that are meant to be kind of like surprise helpful but i would prefer being able to discuss and you know be part of those decisions how in the world am i supposed to not come across as unappreciative of someone just going ahead and, and making the call to do something um but i'm the ceo and i need to be kind of filled in does that make sense and so i'm trying to navigate um gratitude um, but also leadership uh if you have any thoughts on that thank you what a great question. And, you know, this is a management tool that I've learned over the years uh, by understanding how to communicate what needs to be uh, reviewed and what doesn't, what needs to be approved and what doesn't. Uh, and it is a fine line and it's a subtlety uh, that needs to be expressed, especially as a leader. We are trying to be intelligent followers. What does that mean? The best way to approach someone when they are acting with good intention but in an inefficient manner, is to use teaching and learning as the lower vibrational methodology in order to effectuate communication. In other words, ask them to teach you what they did and why they did it, and then through that teaching saying, hey, you know, I wanna know how you're doing this, and this could be one of these surprises that he's doing, or she's doing, whatever it is, and uh, have them teach you what they're doing, and oh, I wanna get your mindset through that, okay, you were thinking this, and so, uh, would it be possible if you could have done this? Do you think it would've been better if we did this? Or, And through those teachings, you're lowering the resistance between you telling them what to do instead of finding out what they're looking and listening for, or what their objectives are, and you may actually learn that you may not want him or her to ask you every time. Uh, and so I think using learning and teaching, reminding yourself as a leader, you're an intelligent follower and taking the position of a follower and an intelligent one to understand why and how and what they're doing in order to effectuate either that they're doing it better or there's a better way to do it or there's a different way to do it but using teaching and a low resistance as an accord to get that mutual understanding and relationship and change that you're looking for. Does that sound fair? Absolutely, that's fantastic, thank you. You got it, thank you Kelly, and you come back again. We love having you in here, okay? Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> cool. Okay, I'm gonna take another question online uh, in Rehan Zab, Z-A-I-B, if I butchered your name, I forgive myself and hopefully you'll forgive me as well. But let me get a quick question online and then we'll get to you. Looks like we got a, a travel tip here. When you have back-to-back -back connecting flights, how do you steer clear of anxiety or frustration? Okay, well one, I use Flight View as an app so that I know exactly where I'm coming in, what time I'm coming in. I'm also tracking the flight going out, what gates they're at. I've also charted out using the traditional maps that are usually provided on the airplane if I need to get food, uh, wh where and how, if there's connecting buses, trams, whatever may be necessary as well. I sit to the front of the plane to maximize the amount of time that I'm gonna have on back-to-back -back or closer connecting flights. 
Uh, in other words, I'm getting alignment, taking action, and preparing for adjustment. I'm utilizing the AAA strategy to do so. If anybody wants the AAA strategy uh, document I have, just email me, david at dmelzer.com. I'll send that, the travel tips. I'll also send my book to you. It's in my book, uh, ebook, audiobook, or a, a hand signed book from me. I'll ship it to you. I'll pay for the book and that. Uh, so make sure you use the AAA strategy, get alignment with the connecting flights by using the apps, the maps, and any other resources you have. Take action, but prepare for adjustments and you will have no anxiety or very little frustration. All right, Rehan, you're up. What question do you have for me? <laughs> sounds, sounds like uh, if anyone... If anybody remembers Charlie Brown's teacher, Rehan sounds like Charlie Brown's teacher. Uh, we'll find, some, Rehan, get reconnected. We'll grab somebody else. Let's so take another question online real quick. If my car worked like technology, we never get anywhere. All right, we're working on it though. A lot of hotel focus on operations. They provide smart tools for guests. But how we can let hotels know guest awareness is very important. Well, just like in any relationship, our personal relationship, we can ask, right? We can ask, you know, what's so nice about a hotel is like going to college, right? The best thing you can do is actually spend time with your professor and let them know your intentions, ask them for help, become an investment of theirs. You'll get better grades every time uh, by aligning with your professor. Think of the hotel management, especially the operations people, as your professor. When you get there, you wanna ask them, and also let them know what your objectives are. I like this, I don't like this. I would, do you have this resource? Can you help me? Do you know anyone here that can help me? What should I do with this? You become an investor of the general manager, the directors of operations, the director of sales, the, the house cleaning, and you also provide value to them. You know, either appreciation, acknowledgement, something they get very little, or cash tips or presents that you may have. I always carry, you know, different things with me, books and, and gifts that, that I love to give. $2 bills is one of my favorite ones. It's amazing. Uh, the special energy and appreciation and acknowledgement and monetary gain, uh, carrying $2 bills around and telling people, you know, when you tip them a $2 bill, hey, you know, this is lucky. I mean, you know, carrying these $2 bills, these are lucky $2 bills. Not only have you given, it's amazing, I've given $2 bills, I carry them all the time in the cities, and when I'm with my children, I make sure they hand out these $2 bills to everyone, look them in the eye, tell them, God bless you, these are lucky $2 bills, and you're gonna have an unbelievable day. It's amazing how many people that are in serious economic need won't even spend the $2 bills and remember us. Uh, I've had people who are living in the street and I come back to a city weeks later and they literally will come up and show me the $2 bill. And usually if they do that, I'll give them a $100 tip uh, just to show them what good luck comes from carrying and holding that $2 bill. I actually manifest or materialize the truth from it. Um, let's bring up Laura. Uh, Laura, are you available? Hi. Hi, David. Hi. You got a question for me? <laughs> I do. First of all, yeah, I'd like to say thank you. I, I've been joining your your room and um, listening to you for the past few weeks now. So thank you so much for all your valuable content. Thank you. Well, we love having you on. Thank you. So um, I guess my question is, I'm a health coach for women with a chronic illness and really trying to help them develop a self-care plan that, you know, reduces their stress um, or inflammation or nutrition induced stress in their uh, body and really kind of develop a self-care plan that um, keeps up with their daily demands and their physical needs. And I've been doing this for about a year now and I'm really struggling to get over the hump of putting out really valuable content. I host a ton of free master classes and I'm also all over social media. Um, so my hump is really, you know, I put out all the valuable content, but I'm struggling with making the sales and closing with clients. So I was wondering, you know, at this stage of my business, what is it that I'm really not seeing that I could do to maybe pivot? So lean into what you are doing. When we want to pivot, when we want to find more time and more opportunity, 
the best way to do it is to lean in what we're doing, meaning lean into efficiency, effectiveness, and statistical success of what we're doing. Utilize the lenses of productivity of really analyzing and studying how productive am I at what I'm doing? How much value am I providing? Where am I providing it? Who can help us? Knowing the five daily practices of knowing my what, knowing my personally what, experientially what, giving and receiving what, knowing my who, not only who can I help, which is quite definitive in what you're doing, but also who can help me know your how, right? By studying with productivity, accessibility, and gratitude. The accessibility is a duality. The accessibility says how accessible am I to others and how am I accessing what I want? And of course, gratitude is giving meaning, the right meaning, by leaning into what you do today, by learning even better to love what you do today so that you have more time and more opportunity. The better we get at what we actually are doing, the more time and opportunity we're gonna to have to do other things, more things, and allow those things to mature and aggregate and compound on themselves. So then I have actually two great choices or three great choices or two great businesses or three great businesses. Too many people try to diversify their focus and then they end up dissipating and diluting the initial uh, things that they have that are creating an opportunity in time and then the time and opportunity diminishes and both fail. So what you need to do is through those lenses of productivity, accessibility, and gratitude, lean in by increasing the skills, the knowledge, and desire that you have. Know your what, your who, your how, your now. Start prioritizing effectively what's important to you. And then, of course, reduce the interference by practicing ending fear. In other words, the definition of knowing your why. Once again, I'll send that to you, Laura, as well, David at dmelzer.com, the five daily practices, my travel tips, AAA or audio, my ebook, or I'll sign a book and send it to you, Laura. If you just email me, david at dmelzer.com or anyone that's listening. Great question. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna take another question online. Anybody else that has a question on Clubhouse, let me know. Uh, we will start here. What do you consider your greatest success as a father? Four things. If my children are healthy, if my children are happy, if my children appreciate me and others, and if my children love themselves. Uh, those are the four things that uh, I look at as a great success is my children are all healthy, they're all happy, they all are appreciative, and they all love themselves. Uh, greatest success as a father is their continual progress in these four areas, which creates an extraordinary abundance and happiness uh, to and through me, knowing that I'm planting seeds for the future, planting seeds under trees that I may never sit under. All right, we have another question on Clubhouse. We got one of my team members, and he's doing such a great job. He's my savior. His name is Jesus. Hey, Dave. Thanks for the introduction. Um, real quick question uh, about the graduations and stuff. What should we take out of a graduation and what lens should we look through? Yeah, so, uh, you know, taking from a graduation is we don't want to attach our emotions to the outcome. What we want to do is attach our emotions to the journey to the enjoyment of the consistent, persistent pursuit of our potential. A graduation is a milestone. Uh, it is not something that we attach our emotions to, but through. And we start appreciating through the lenses that I told you, uh, the lens of uh, one productivity is through this graduation, which represents and acknowledges a certain amount of experience, a certain amount of knowledge, a certain amount of desire, that I now am more prepared with my skills, knowledge, and desire in order to effectuate something coming up. Use, utilizing that milestone to inspire, to remind, to recollect and remember how grateful I am, as well as productive and accessible. Uh, it is a milestone as a reminder of recollection uh, in order to facilitate greater expansion and growth, um, but it is not the end. I spent too many years attaching my emotions to graduations. I'll be happy when I graduate college. I'll be happy when I graduate law school. I'll be happy when I graduate business school. I'll be happy when I graduate, I'll be happy when my girls graduate high school. No, 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 no. 
I am happy in the enjoyment of, right? Consistently every day, persistently without quit, pursuing my potential in education, my potential in giving, my potential in business, my potential in writing or speaking or producing, whatever it may be. I am enjoying that that pursuit. And the lenses that we use are the same lenses that we talked about in the five daily practices of knowing my what, my who, my how, my now, my why, using productivity, accessibility, and gratitude as those lenses, the Meltzer Kaleidoscope that provides abundance, that allows me to view a world between limitlessness and infinity, a world of more than enough of everything for everyone. And those are what I would utilize. The biggest thing with graduation is there's this huge disappointment. And I'm gonna use, I was in an interview today and using, this was incredible, uh, the Olympics, and I forget which Olympics it was, but the person that was in charge of the Olympics, his greatest, was asked what his greatest accomplishment when the Olympics was over. And he said, nobody that worked for me killed themselves. And the reason that he said that was that every other Olympic beforehand, people had attached their emotions so heavily to an outcome that when the Olympics were over, even though they knew it happens every four years, even though they knew it was only two weeks long, even though, right, that the letdown, the void shortage and obstacles and interference was so great, the depression, anxiety, and frustration, the triggers of the ego were so enormous from all the effort that had been put in that depression, anxiety took over and people took their own lives. We do not want to attach our emotions to an outcome. So many people have so many family difficulties at these graduations. They create so much interferences, so many void shortages and obstacles with the people that they love that they ruin the experience of graduation, which is just part of the consistent, persistent pursuit of the potential, the celebration, the celebration. You will never be happy if you attach your emotions to an outcome because the outcomes will come and the emotions will still be there. So utilize that with the lens of productivity, accessibility, and gratitude. Reconcile truth with humankind. Another great example. All right, I'm going to take a question online and one more person in Clubhouse. The last question will come from Sally Gardner. Let me take this question real quickly. Are you making an effort to tackle meetings virtually or prefer to be in person when possible? Even when travel is required, I am sure case by case, just generally speaking. Thank you, Randy. Um, uh, your questions are exactly like our conversations, so it's interesting how this works out. Um, look, I don't tackle any meetings virtually or in person. It's very simple. I have a 520 rule. Determinative upon my what, my who, my how, my now, my why, I determine the activities I get paid for and the activities I don't get paid for. I also determine the activities I planned and don't have planned and my sleep. I also utilize the 520 rule, whether it's virtually or in person, whether they're, like I said, I hold court, I try to get everybody to come to me. But for example, if I have a speaking engagement in Los Angeles, like I do on the 25th, so if anybody out there is in Los Angeles, come to, I'm doing a great thing with Michael Brandoff uh, with his art gallery, a fireside chat at 5.30 p.m. on the 25th of this month, next week on Tuesday, <coughs> I will have 20, different live meetings minimum and i'll have 30 virtual things because i have a 520 rule i will take my five minute phone calls and my 20 minute meetings virtually and in per in in person determined upon what the prioritization of my five daily practices are so if that fireside chat is most important then that will be the centralized hub of utilizing my activity i get paid for an activity i don't get paid for it'll create the efficiencies the effectiveness and statistical success of what i do see the non-determinate factor isn't virtual or not it's prioritizing and knowing your five daily practices that's why i want to send everyone those practices uh, it's free. Let me just email me, david at dmelter.com or my ebook, audio book, or my handwritten signed book shipped to you and paid by me, david at dmelter.com. Please, these are answers that make things so simple and clear, balanced and focused, allowing you to be efficient, effective, and statistically successful. You can bend time with productivity, accessibility, and gratitude. You can reconcile the truth 
and humankind and the imperfections that exist between the continuum of the conscious, the subconscious, and the unconscious mind, between your practicality and your emotions, your faith and your dollars. Both currencies can be reconciled in this truth versus humankind scenario. It's not a matter of virtually or in person, it's a matter of prioritization and utilization of time. Thank you so much. Last question, here we go. My friend Sally Gardner, what do you got for me? Hey David, thank you so much for um, allowing me to ask a question. I loved what you were saying about don't attach emotions to an outcome. That's a super important piece of uh, information, a great nugget. Um, so my question is, what should one expect from a mentor versus from a coach? <laughs> Thank you, Sai. I love that question. And I think there's three things, a mentor, a coach, or a teacher. Uh, so a mentor, what I, people used to ask me this question, by the way, and my favorite joke was $500. That was the difference, uh, $500 an hour, but that's not true. A mentor, exactly. <laughs> a mentor is someone, <laughs> uh, thank you. A mentor is someone that gives the best of themselves. So a mentor sits in a situation that you want to be in. They're the ones giving you directions on how to get there from their own personal not giving their best to you. Uh, and then a teacher is someone that is able to explain to you how to effectuate what a mentor or coach uh, it may be giving you or, or getting out of you. And so a teacher is someone that actually can explain it to you in a simple way. Uh, and it, yes, people can be all three. So don't think there's, there's only one. And But it's important, I think most important, that when you're in a relationship uh, in this type of nature to help people, that you determine, does this person need mentoring? Does this person need coaching? Or do they need a teacher? And when and where to be a mentor, a coach, and a teacher, especially as a parent, is so essential. Uh, what a great question. So remember, give the best of yourself as a mentor, get the best out of them as a coach, and explain things so that they understand them as a teacher. Sally, you're incredible. What a great way to end. I'm going back to celebration. I'm a celebrant, not a celebrity. That's my goal, to empower over a billion people to be happy. Remember everyone, if you want any of the exercises from the AAA strategy to the five daily practices to the travel tips, just email me, david at dmelzer.com. Also remember, if you want my book, ebook, audiobook, or you need to sign a book and ship it to you and pay for it, not a problem. David at dmeltzer.com. Every Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific, no matter where I am, what country I'm in, I will do my best as I have over the last 20 years to help people and allow them to empower others, to empower others, to be happy, to make more money, help more people, and have more fun. Next week's training is BYOQ. You bring the questions, I'll bring the answers. Remember, most importantly, everybody, be kind to your future self and do good deeds. We'll see you next week. Thank you.